Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Trizity Traveling. I'm your host, John. And if I sound a little congested, that's because I am. I've had the unfortunate luck to collect a spring break cold, of all things. Very disappointed in my nose right now, and but uh, I'm just about over it, and can't let that keep you down. Filming this on Monday, I've waited till now because my voice was not working very well and hearing myself right now, I don't know that it's working very well right now either, but we're going forward anyway. Today's video is really a summary of my visit to the Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. More specifically, this video focuses more on my, what do you want to call it, love and admiration of the Saturn V rocket. This is the second time I've seen a Saturn V rocket up close and it is just awesome. I, I don't have any other words for it. So this is my second. I'm hoping to go back to Florida this summer to see the third at the Kennedy Space Center. But stay tuned and find out if that ever happens. In addition to the Apollo era artifacts on display, there are many other rockets and other displays available for you to enjoy. And it is also the home of the US Space Camp. A lot of our current astronauts turns out uh, visited Space Camp here in Huntsville, Alabama when they were younger. So while today's video will be heavily influenced by Apollo and the Saturn V rocket, there's a lot more here to see than just that. So if you like rockets and like the space program and like all that good stuff, the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama is a place for you to visit. Let's check it out. As I mentioned in the intro, rockets are awesome and I've loved them since I was a little kid. I wasn't around for Apollo 11 in 1969, but my first real memories of rocketry are the space shuttle. Welcome to the US Space and Rocket Center. This is gonna be awesome. I discovered the Saturn V and Apollo program while growing up, and I've always loved seeing footage of the Saturn V launches. Now that they're on YouTube, it's really easy to watch and imagine what it must have been like to watch a Saturn V launch in person. Spectacular is the word that comes to mind. In its infancy, the US space program was led by Werner von Braun. The building with the Saturn V has a display dedicated to von Braun along with some artifacts of his, but more on that later. When you walk into the Davidson Center, you are greeted with the flamey end of the Saturn V with its five F-1 rocket engines. A trip from the Earth to the Moon needed a big kick to get started, and the F-1 provided that kick. A significant part of the museum rightly focuses on this big dumb engine. A single F-1 engine could produce 1.5 million pounds of thrust. As we move up the rocket to the second stage, we find five J-2 engines. This was the space program's largest engine that used liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as propellants. A single J-2 powered the third stage and was used to start the astronauts on their journey to the moon. The Saturn V on display in Huntsville was a test vehicle and used for vibration and static tests to prove the structural design of the overall rocket. On top of the third stage, the rocket's computer brain or instrument unit was mounted in a ring. Since the Saturn V was a multi-stage rocket, this placement on top of the upper stage is necessary as the first two stages were shed during launch to reduce weight. 
I spent all this time on that Saturn V rocket because I love it, but we didn't start there on our journey to the moon. I mentioned Von Braun at the beginning. He built the first successful, if you want to call it that, intercontinental ballistic missile, the V-2 for the Germans during World War II. At the end of the war, he was brought to the U.S. and led our rocket development program. For American human spaceflight, the first real milestone is the Mercury program. Alan B. Shepard was the first U.S. person in space, although just for 15 minutes, using the Redstone rocket. The Mercury program proved that we could get into space, and the Gemini program, our next step, developed and proved that we could work in space. By the way, the Gemini capsule is super tiny. I can't imagine spending any amount of time in that thing. Gemini was followed up by the Saturn program with the H-1 rocket engine and the Saturn 1 and 1B rockets. A Saturn 1 Block 2 is on display outside at the rocket center. Like the Saturn 5, this was a vehicle used for static testing at the Marshall Space Flight Center. The upper stage of the Saturn 1 used the RL-10 engine, the first to use liquid hydrogen as its fuel. A cutaway of the RL-10 is displayed for us to nerd out with. The RL-10 display wraps the rocket portion and moves us into Apollo. A replica of the Apollo 16 lunar module is on display with its rover, descent and ascent engines. Next door is Casper, the actual Apollo 16 command module that went to the moon and came back to Earth in 1972. Everything but the heat shield looks to be well preserved on this priceless artifact. Included in the command module display area is a nearly one pound moon rock recovered with Apollo 12. After the astronauts returned from the moon, they were quarantined in a special trailer. One of these trailers from Apollo 12 is on display here at the rocket center. Next door to the trailer is a Skylab Orbital Workshop walkthrough. Outside in the yard, a Skylab mock-up is on display. It is interesting to see the oxygen tanks in the mock-up since this is one of the few parts of the laboratory to make it all the way back to Earth when it burned up in the atmosphere during its re-entry. In addition to Skylab, the yard has multiple missiles and rockets on display with other military hardware. Normally this space shuttle is a full stack on display, 
However, the shuttle mock-up has been removed for refurbishment. One thing that isn't closed off was a space shuttle engine in the yard. Camp appears to be run in the International Space Station mock-up during normal times. So I think I'm all done at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. As I've seen on the internet, and I'm stealing, frankly, just stealing, outright stealing. Remember to exit through the gift shop. By the way, I broke my sunglasses. They were on my hat. And when I went into the Saturn V building and gawked at the F1 engines, they fell off square onto the lenses. It's hard to see, but both lenses fractured. It's super bummer. And the only bad thing other than COVID restrictions at the museum. I'll be closing today's video with a couple of my favorite photos from the visit, which you can get more of on my website at tricitytraveling.com. A link is in the description. Thanks for coming along on my Nerdfest. Please take a second to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And as always, I'm going to wish you and yours safe and happy travels.